Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in tonight. Come on in tonight. This is your host, Tiffany Devon. I am a certified life coach and wardrobe stylist, and I style leaders and influencers in fearless fashions. And I am excited about tonight because tonight is In Light of the Queen, a Black History Month series. I rolled out this series last year of 2021. I did um, a tribute to Black women who have made an impact in our culture from the 1800s all the way up until the present. And so what I really enjoy about In Light of the Queen series is that we get to look at each of the women's lives and see what what they left, what uh, what trail they blazed for us to be able to walk in. And so it is no different than tonight. So Silhouette of a Queen in Light of the Queen, a Black History Month series. I will be doing it the entire month of February. So make sure that you hit the notification, turn it on so that you do not miss it. And also just pay attention to the time because I've been kind of playing with the time a little bit. Sometimes I'm at eight o'clock, sometimes I'm at nine o'clock central time. So either way it goes, when you hit the notification button and press it to get notified when I go live, you won't have to worry about that because you won't miss it. And you can always catch the replay. For my replay watchers, I see you because you leave comments in the comments section letting me know that you are catching the, the replay. So how are you guys doing? We're already in February of 2022. Some things are happening, things are shifting, things are moving. And, you know, one of the things when things shift and move, I'm always like, all right, God, what are we doing? What are we doing? And because I am such a woman who lives her life according to purpose and direction, I always know that whatever God is doing and moving, it is not always without some type of purpose. And so that is where we are in the world today. And so it is my hope that tonight with the ladies that I'll be sharing and talking about tonight, that we can look at their lives and look at, you know, what it takes to be a woman, what it takes to be a trailblazer, what it takes to be able to do things that have never been done before. And I can tell you as a woman who God has chosen to pioneer different things, you will not always be understood. People will not always understand your path. They will not understand why you're moving the way that you move. And one of the beautiful things about it though is when you are called to do things to do things that have never been done before, not only does God have a way of speaking boldly into your spirit, but he will put people around you that will just uplift you, hold you up and be like, girl, you can do this. It doesn't matter what people think. It doesn't matter what they say. So you are never, ever on this path or journey by yourself. It may feel like you're by yourself, but you are not by yourself. So that's why it's so important for us queens to always make sure we have a court of women who are always going to be able to motivate, uplift us and keep us motivated for the path in which we're called. And so I just wanted to say that to you. I just wanted to drop that in there to you all. So thank you for, for watching tonight. Hello, Laval. That's my, my, my bestie boo that's in the comment section. She's always uh, supporting me and, and I really appreciate it. Not only just her, I have to also, you know, call out to other women in my life, like Gabrielle, thank you so much. My sisters and every Melissa and all the other women that, you know, really have poured into my life. Um, they keep me grounded. They keep me going. They speak things into my spirit. And so here we are. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get started tonight and start the Black History Month series. Yay! It is Black History Month, and we're just going to jump it off with this beautiful queen. Some of you may not ever have heard of her, and if you haven't, that is okay, because I'm going to introduce you to who she is. This is Lorraine Hansberry. She was born in, on May 19, 1930. She was a playwright and writer, and she died um, January 12, 1965. Um, I want to, 
kind of lift up like who she who she is. Uh oh, hope you, wait a minute. Hold on just a second. Um, who she was. So um, Lorraine Hansberry was basically the first African American woman to ever have a play featured on Broadway. She wrote the play. I don't know if you're familiar with her or not, but it was a very popular um, play. And I even remember reading it when I was in probably about middle school, high school, and it was called A Raisin in the Sun. And it featured the late Sidney Poitier. How many of you know that Sidney Poitier? Um, he passed away actually in January, um, a trailblazer in his own right. But he was featured in A Raisin in the Sun, along with uh, Ruby D, who, who was a popular actress um, back in the day. Uh, I want to uh, take the time here, just one moment to, uh, I'll come back here with the, with the screen here. And I want to just read you briefly, like the life of of Lorraine Hansberry. So Lorraine Hansberry was the youngest of four children. She was born to Carl Augustus Hansberry. She was a, he was a successful real estate broker and, and Nanny Louise born Perry, a driving school teacher and ward committee woman. Um, Carl Hansberry, who was Lorraine's father, was also a supporter of the Urban League and NAACP in Chicago. Um, both of the Hansberrys were active in the Chicago Republican Party. Her father died in 1946 when Lorraine was only 15 years old. Um, she believed that American racism um, is what killed him. Um, during this time of her growing up throughout this year, she, she was no stranger to influential pe people. And so that would have included W.E.B. Du Bois, poet Langston Hughes, um, who was a singer, activist, and political activist in his own right, and Paul Robeson, um, musician Duke Ellington, and Olympic gold medalist Jesse Owens. So like I said, she was the first African-American female author to have a play performed on Broadway. Um, she um, writ, wrote and completed The a Raisin in the Sun in 1957. And um, as a 29-year-old author, she came, became the youngest American playwright and only the fifth woman to receive the New York Drama Critics Circle. Um, she was also nominated for the Tony Award for Best Play. Among the four Tony Awards that the play was nominated for in 1960, over the next two years, A Raisin and Sun was translated into 35 languages and was being performed all over the world. Um, to give you a little bit of backdrop about the play A Raisin in the Sun, it, it is based off of when a newly widowed matriarch receives $10,000 life insurance check. She soon learns her family has their own ideas on how to spend the money. And like I said, it stars Sidney Poitier, Ruby D, and Louis Gossett Jr. Now I remember Louis Gossett Jr. Um, back in his day, but the play was, it was very um, impactful for me because I grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood and I went to elementary and middle schools were, that were predominantly black. So definitely being able to not only read um, A Raisin in the Sun, but also watch the movie was so instrumental because it depicted the lives of, of black people and the struggles that blacks went through in the times in which Lorraine Hansberry wrote the, the script, which would have made it very impactful in her day um, with that play and story going on to uh, be translated into 35 different languages, as, as I said. So we definitely learn and see a lot about Lorraine Hansberry's life. Um, she, she was a woman that was really, ahead of her time. And I think, you know, the reason why I just enjoy looking at the lives of the women that I selected is that a lot of times they had no experience in which their background and which, in which they came. And so they oftentimes had to face racism, sexism, 
and, and be willing to continue to fight and push for what it is that they either believed in, whether it was their gift, whether that was you know, political or social activism, they, they were willing to, to push forward to make sure that they reflected during their times and their culture in which they live. The next lady that I wanna to talk to you about is, let's see here. So this quote that I wanna just say before I move on to the next lady is, um, Lorraine Hansberry said, a woman who is willing to be herself and pursue her own potential runs not so much the risk of loneliness as the challenge of exposure to more interesting men and people in general. So what does that quote say to you? I want you to think about that. I know what it says to me is that a woman who is willing to be herself and pursue her own potential runs not so much the risk of loneliness as the challenge of exposure. Let's think, let's look at that for a minute. What that says to me is, if you're going to pursue passion, purpose, what comes along with that is exposure. And a lot of times I think that is what holds us back from actually pursuing and becoming all that we need to be because there is a level of light that comes with it, a level of spotlight where people are gonna know who you are. They're gonna know your name. You're not gonna be able to hide in the cave and be, and be snuggy behind the scenes like you would like. How much is it though that God uses people like that the most? Because those are the ones that have the greatest impact on our culture are the people who have the exposure. So if you're ever gonna do anything of greatness, anything of value to any other people, you that is the risk of, of exposure. So we got to make sure that when we decide to go after the dream and after the life that we desire, make sure that we can withstand the heat that comes from it, that comes from it. But not only will we be able to withstand the heat that comes from it, God is going to make sure that he puts us on the obstacle course that we are prepared and ready. So by the time we do get there, we're not burned by the light of success. All right, let's talk about our next queen, Judith Jameson. So Judith Jameson was born May 10th, 1943. She was an American dancer and choreographer. So she says here, I believe in being prepared. I'm going to say that, pray, prepare, and proceed. So I wanna um, just read to you here a little bit of backdrop about Judith Jameson. And um, she was born in 1943 to Tessie Brown Jameson and John Jameson Sr. And she grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania with her parents and older brother. Her father taught her to play the piano and violin she was exposed to the prominent art culture in Philadelphia from a very early age. At the age of six, she began her dance training at Judah Mar School of Dance. There she studied with Marion Kuje, who became one of Jameson's early mentors. Under Kuje's tutelage, Jameson um, studied classical ballet and modern dance. The Judah Mar studios were treated as a holy place. And there was always a sense of performance and theatricality in Kujay's classes. By the age of eight, Jameson began dancing on point and started taking classes in tap, acrobatics, and done in the Dunham technique. Jameson made her premiere with the Alvin Ailey Dance Theater at Chicago's Harper Theater Dance Festival in 1965 in Congo Tango Palace. And in 1966, she toured Europe and Africa with the company. Jameson had always had a strong interest in African identity. Therefore, traveling to Africa with the company and having the opportunity to observe the culture firsthand was an exciting and valuable experience for her. In 1988, Jameson returned to Alvin Ailey Dance Theater 
as an artistic associate. Upon Alvin Ailey's death on December 1st, 1989, she assumed the role of artistic director and dedicated the next 21 years of her life to the company's success. Alvin Ailey Dance Theater continued to thrive as Jameson continued to rehearse and restage classics from the company's repertory and as well as commission distinguished choreographers to create new works for the dancers. Jameson also continued to choreograph and create dances such as Forgotten Time, Him, Love Stories, and Among Us for the company. In July 2011, Jameson transitioned into the role of artistic director Emerita and appointed Robert Battle to the position of artistic director designate. I want to give you just a little bit of backdrop of Alvin Ailey. If you're not familiar with Alvin Ailey, Alvin Ailey um, was a black man who started his own dance company. And so he was an American choreographer and activist, and um, he founded the Alvin Ailey Dance Theater in New York in 1958. It was a hugely popular, multiracial, modern dance ensemble that popularized modern dance around the world thanks to extensive world tours. His most famous dance is Revelations, a celebratory story of religious spirit. Ailey received the Kennedy Center Honors in 1988. A year later, on December 1st, Alvin Ailey died um, of AIDS in New York City. So I want to give reference to um, Judith Jameson uh, because um, I remember her. Many of you, this is uh, my story, why I chose these two ladies tonight, Lorraine Hansberry and Judith Jameson because they both are from the arts and creative in their own right. So, um, I used to dance when I was a little girl. And I started dancing when I was about, I wanna say between the ages, I was anywhere between the ages of seven to nine. And I used to do ballet, I used to do jazz and um, a, a little bit of, a little bit of everything. And I was so excited. I remember trying out for this dance troupe where, where I grew up and I was able to be a part of it. And I was so excited about it. And one of the things that the dance troupe did is that we would go to different uh, venues in Kansas City performing. And I would have to put on the costumes and the makeup. And I would be so nervous. And I spent tirelessly on weekends um, practicing and performing. And so we would perform at these different venues. And I remember being so nervous that, um, but by the time the curtains would draw, it was just something in me that would just activate and I would just dance and perform. And so I certainly remember hearing about Alvin Ailey Dance Theater, because if you were a dancer, to go and be accepted in that school was to say you were a part of the best. And I chose Judith Jameson because over the years, I remember hearing about her. In fact, when I was, I think maybe middle school or high school, um, Alvin Ailey had came, the, the dance had came through Kansas City. And I remember going seeing it and being so engulfed by the dancers and the costumes and the movement and how, how they just pull the audience in. And it, it was something about it that always let me know that I was drawn to the arts, that I was drawn to performing. And it was through this time as a little girl that my dad began to see that, oh, she's destined for the stage. And so my dad always has spoken that over my life was that he saw me as a dancer. So I wanted to be able to highlight these two women um, because she says here, I believe in being prepared. I'm going to say that pray, prepare, proceed. How many of us know that we are in a time of that? Pray, prepare, proceed. Pray, prepare, proceed. Pray for what you want. 
prepare for what you're praying for and then proceed, move on, go off of the instruction that you get in prayer, then prepare and proceed. And tonight, these two ladies shows us that God is no respecter of a person. Not at all. I, I wanted to leave with you this quote tonight that is by Nina Simone. Let me just, okay. She says, it's an artist's duty to reflect the times in which we live. As hard as 2020, 2021 has been, this really struck me because what most of you may not know is that although I do lead with the wardrobe styling and coaching, my first love is as a writer. And I've always have written things from the time that I was five. By the time that I was eight years old, I told my mother that I was going to be an author when I grew up. And I spoke that into existence. I published my first book at uh, in 2006, I was 20, I think it was 27, 28 years old, something like around there. But I've always had a knack for paying attention to things around me and recording things on paper. So for the late and great Nina Simone to say, it's an artist's duty to reflect the times in which we live, it it speaks to the measure and the responsibility that we have as women to be able to push our culture forward in 2022, that we can leave such an imprint and legacy to where people will say, hmm, if it had not been for her, I would have never known this. I would have never found the courage to do this or because you shared your story, I now know that I have it within me to do dot, 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 whatever your dot, dot, dot is. Everybody has a dot, dot, dot. And so tonight we close with the life of Lorraine Hansberry and Judith Jameson. May our light shine bright before, as the Bible says, before men, but may our light shine bright before women and men, because we know as women and leaders and influencers, we, um, we are called to shine, shine our light before others. But, you know, to do it in such a way that is encouraging, impactful, fun, energetic, make people want to be around you. People should want to be around you. People should want... Your light should be so bright that it's just, it's just something emanating from you that feels so good. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you turn on the notification because I will return next week with the In Light of the Queen series. And I'm going to be highlighting two more women. So you don't want to miss it. Make sure it's on so that you can get the notification when I go live. Make sure you continue to follow all of my social media handles. If you're not doing so, I am on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And I just want to thank you so much for to tonight coming in and joining In Light of the Queen series. We'll be back, Silhouette of a Queen. Again, I am your host, Tiffany Devon, and I will see you next week. All right, we're going to go ahead and end. See you next week.